once again, look, Michael's having to defend, and Mika, and there's a, but the back marker's in the way. Can he do it? it? Yes, he's done it. A brilliant move there, either side of Zonta, and Hakkinen brilliantly takes the lead of the Belgian Grand Prix. And is up to fourth position ahead of Schumacher and challenging Bentlinger as they go round the right-hander into the old hairpin. Senna is up to third. And after being crowded at the start, a quite brilliant couple of corners by Ayrton Senna. Tremendous stuff. He muscled his way back into the contention at Redgate. He's going inside Damon Hill. And Senna into second place already. And Senna goes through into the lead. He's passed Alain Prost, so the McLaren leads Prost second. Hill is third. A tremendous gap between the third. He's just got to go down to the Melbourne hairpin. Uh, into the S's shortly, I'm sorry. And then uh, he's, he's almost home for yet another Grand Prix victory. And it will have pleased him more than anything else, I think, that he's beaten his arch-rival Alain Prost in what Senna regards as superior equipment in terms of the Williams car and the Renault engine. But Damon Hill, second for Williams. So here is Ayrton Senna across the line and it is victory for the Brazilian for the 38th time. The conditions may, be, may have deteriorated, but it was in conditions like this that Ayrton Senna won his first Grand Prix for Lotus in Portugal in 1985. I've done it, he says. Out comes the best of victory. And Senna has got another 10 World Championship Toya will score nothing, he's out of the race, look at this though, Alonso's going for it, down the inside, on the grass, two wheels, Fernando Alonso, what a brilliant move once again, another fantastic pass. Stunning, Alonso is totally fearless today. <laughs> As you say, Jean touched there, he's dragged his driver away. Michael, absolutely furious. I just saw the car as I came in, absolutely destroyed the front suspension. He's walking past me now, he's ready, he's close to tears, guys. The instant the safety car had to do down from La Source to Eau Rouge, a gigantic ball of spray, and Schumacher is certainly not deferring as they go out of La Source, and Damon runs wide station in the hope that something is going to happen to one of the six cars. David Hill wins in Belgium. Fantastic. A racing third. Well, what an, an unbelievable race. It's sixth position and out goes TK. My goodness. It seems that the Brabham's are fated and he has hit Eliseo Salazar and he's furious. The Brazilian and the, Col the Colombian driver, I couldn't help it, says, and take that, oh my goodness.
Once more, we'll take the gap between Prost and Senna, first and second. It was 11 seconds, having come down from 15 on the previous lap. Prost waved his hand up the previous lap, but not this one. And there goes Senna, and it's only seven seconds now. All the time. By being a racing driver means you are racing with other people. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. Because we are competing. We are competing to win. And, and the main motivation to all of us is to compete for a victory. It's not to come third, fourth, fifth or sixth. I race. Where is Nigel Mansell on the last lap for second place and six points that's going to give him the world championship? Here he is. He hasn't got far to go now because when he comes out of this right-hander, dropping downhill, he will go into turn 10, the second gear, 60 mile an hour corner, and he's up to the last corner now. You are about to see Nigel Mansell become world champion of 1992 as Brundle goes off. Brundle off, and <coughs> Mansell finishes, and he's world champion. There is the Jordan Hart of Rubens Barrichello passing and lapping Ricardo Patrese. That's how quick the young Brazilian is going. And Senna is... Oh, that's Hackett oh, no, Hackett, Hackett at the race leader. He's out of the race. He's out of the race. Mika Hackett retires on lap 30. And Heinz Harold Fredson leads. And this could blow the world championship wide open. And Mika Hackett after the misery of Belgium is consumed with rage and the Tifosi are consumed with delight. How much of a strain was it having to drive after that false start? Well, it was... Uh, Nerve-wracking. No, very relaxing, except that I was naturally worried about the handling of my car and the first few, first quarter of the race it wasn't good and then it seemed to improve as, the, as things went on. How, how yeah. remarkable. Can you give me a cigarette? Can I grab that cigarette off you? disappointment for him he may have been prepared to move over and look at that out that and colossally that's Mansell that is Nigel Mansell and the car absolutely shattered he's fighting for control and you can see what's happened Mansell is out of the race now this could change and will change the world championship Damon's on wet weather tyres. The braking capabilities are much, much better on the wets than Schumacher has on the tries. Schumacher tries to go around the side of him. <laughs> this is side-by-side -side stuff through Legume. Schumacher oh. tries to put Damon Hill out onto the kerb as they come through. Incredible. And he almost succeeded. This is going to be a mighty emotional occasion for a lot of people, not the least of whom is myself. And Damon Hill will be concentrating in the cockpit there. But when he comes out of it, his arms will go up, the helmet will come off. That is his wife, Georgie. She's seeing her husband become world champion. Now she's seeing him win the Japanese Grand Prix because he is almost home. This is something that many people didn't think could possibly happen today. They thought Damon would drive a cautious race, but he fought. He fought from second on the grid. He passed Jack Villeneuve. He took the lead. He stayed there. And Damon Hill exits the chicane and wins the Japanese Grand Prix. And I've got to stop because I've got a lump in my throat.